Hey YouTube, uh, just doing a quick little video on uh, how I did a little uh, trigger job on this uh, high power here. Um, I got this as a, this is a clone from Argentina. Um, it's already been uh, safety and whatnot. Um, Remove the grips already for you. Um, let me show you uh, what I did. When you pull the uh, trigger on the high power, you can see right there, there is a, the little lever pushes up. On your, on your slide here, you got this little uh, rocker arm. As, as you push the trigger, you push on this guy, this, the other side of the lever goes towards the frame. Okay? And what it actually hits is this little thing right here. And when you uh, when you pull the trigger, and that little arm hits this guy right here, it rocks this thing up and down like that. I don't know the correct terms. I'm not a gunsmith. And uh, oh, a little disclaimer, you know, this is just for entertainment purposes only. If you try this at home and you kill yourself, not my problem. Um, anyways. When you uh, when you hit this right here and this thing rocks back, it's gonna release the hammer forward, striking your firing pin, and obviously the gun fires. Um, with mine out of the box, it was you know good for single action, but it still had a lot of creep. Um, I already removed the uh, magazine disconnect safety. There's plenty of videos online to show you how to do it, so I'm not gonna even go there. Um, after I did that, there's still a little bit more to be desired from on this uh, on this gun here. So what I did, um, so this is the basically the problem right here. This sear has to travel a long ways up before it breaks, and and let's uh, when I say break, I mean it lets go and clears the uh, the little hump right there, and uh, and the hammer goes forward. So I, I was gonna take a file right here and take some of the meat off so that uh, this thing doesn't have to travel as far up before it clears. Um, and I also polish the edges right there. Um, so I'll show you that. Um, first things first, you have to uh, remove this little pin right here, and uh, in order. To the be easiest way to do that is to uh, obviously take the uh, take the pressure off the sear right here, so you can move it freely like this. And by and there's a couple ways of doing that. Um, I use this thing. I'll obviously, put the rubber side down so you don't mar up your finish. But you can also use a wire. If you uh, stick it through here and then just tie your tie your hammer down, that works too. Um, but this is just easier because you can remove it faster and whatnot. So you go like that. You take off the pressure off the uh, off the uh, sear, and you push it down. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, when you push this pin all the way out, um, there's a reed spring right here. I don't know if you can see it. There is a uh, reed spring right here, and uh, it will fling the little uh, sear out. So be sure to, you know, try to contain it as it flies out. And there we go. So the pin, when it comes fully out, you're going to have your little, what I call a sear. I'm pretty sure I'm using the wrong term here. And you got this guy and then the little, uh, the reed spring. So remember how it goes in there. Um, goes like that. So this part right here needs to be uh, needs to be polished up. Um, it's already pretty fine, so I wouldn't remove any more meat on it. But I guess you could. Um, obviously, I'm not a gunsmith, so at your own discretion. Um, it's already pretty fine though on mine, so uh, I'm just gonna give it a good polish on the buffing wheel there. 
maybe sand it with like 500 or 600 grit and then 800 grit and then uh, just jab it in the buffing wheel and have at it. All right, so now that the little uh, sear is gone, um, the nothing is holding the hammer back anymore, okay? So when you let off the, uh, you gotta just slowly let the hammer out like that. As soon as the hammer is free and uh, not in tension, um, the only thing holding this uh, entire assembly together is your safety. And uh, you can see right here, your safety protrudes on the other side too. So you always got to push this pin. And you can see the safety slowly come out. You just lift it out. And then you have your uh, safety plate mechanism thing, which uh, locks up the the sear from moving and the, also the hammer from cocking. And you can see you have your, I don't know if you can see on the video here, you have your, uh, this is your wedge right here to hold the hammer back and then you have your half cock position right here. And this guy, this guy rides like that. There we go. If you remove some meat on this edge right here, just a little bit, um, by using like a file just to you know file a little bit at a time putting it back in the gun fitting it see uh see how much uh you know creep you reduce by doing that you know back and forth back and forth back and forth um you will be able to get a nice clean break um let me warn you do not take too much meat off because if you take too much meat off right here um, this guy will not uh, have a lot of, uh, for lack of a better term, like area or real estate to sit on um, to hold the hammer back. And uh, if that happens, uh, if you drop the gun or whatever happens, uh, you do have a high potential of um, releasing the hammer um, when you don't want it to. And that obviously has bad news all over it when this is a single action only gun. And if you do carry it, uh, lock and loaded. Um, so obviously this is just a, uh, entertainment purpose, you know, video. So do as you will. Um, but that's what I did. And, uh, I filed a little bit off, clean off the, uh, there's not really a whole lot of, I guess we call it machining burrs on it, but I still, uh, just kind of clean it off real quick with a little emery cloth on it. And then uh, put this thing to the polishing wheel and polish the hell out of it right here. I don't know if you guys can see the uh, the lip or not. But yeah, you see the little... It's polished pretty well right there. And then uh, same for... Uh, same for this guy right here. Um, as you can see, on the lip of it, it's polished. And uh, it just makes it for, you know, it, it doesn't really, like, creep or anything. It just, boom, snaps. And uh, that's kind of what you want right there. Um, since uh, we have everything apart, I'll also be installing a uh, the, the cylinder and slide uh, extended safety on, on this gun here. Um, it comes with its own uh, spring, you can see and uh, a little detent so just gotta install it in here um, I'm gonna use a little bit of this like gun slick graphite stuff just to you know just put a little bit inside put your detent in make sure the round part sticks up I guess I will put a little too much in and we're going to reassemble everything back together. Put the hammer back in. Make sure the uh, spring locks back on right here. I don't know if you can see if my camera's focusing or not. There we go. Um, just put it like that. Make sure the hammer's forward like that so you can just see us a clear hole right here. And put this little plate back in just as so I 
There we go. Check the safety. It's in there all the way. All right. Just rotate this little plate up and then uh, cock your hammer back. Lock the hammer back down. This is the little interesting part here. Um, make sure this uh, this little piece, this piece right here, sticks towards the front of the gun. And you can see there's a little hole right here for it. So when you put it in, Just make sure it seats on the front of the gun just like that. So you see it's in right here. And this is the little bit tricky, but not really that tricky though. You just have to uh, pull this uh, or hold this little reed back, okay, as you install this guy back in, okay? So make sure this thing goes underneath it. Just like that, and you just drop it right in, okay? And you just uh, have to look down that one pinhole right here, and uh, as you, if you can see, you know, light on the other side, you're lined up, and just drop your pin, and wiggle it in. And give it a slight tap. all the way in. And if you did it right, this uh, I should catch it right there and do a little function check. It breaks. So you are good to go. Pull the safety all the way up. See if you can trip. You cannot trip the hammer, so safety functions good. Safety down. Hammer trips. We slide this thing back. Catches on it. Install this thing back. Beautiful. Real clean, real clean break. Yep. And there you go. You have a Browning High Power with a very clean trigger on it and an extended safety on it.